ready for something new, original, and beautiful. A game that draws inspiration from ancient folklore and adds the cutting-edge innovations of today, creating an action-adventure like none before. From Capcom's Clover Studios, feast your eyes on Okami. When you play Okami, you'll notice a unique visual style, a creative brainstorming bonus that seemingly fell from the heavens. We'd always been really good at making realistic type Resident Evil or Devil May Cry action sort of games in the past. And one of the basic concepts that we wanted to work off here was to take that sort of style and make it more nature-based. And when we tried to do that in 3D realistic graphics, it just didn't look as pretty as we thought it would. Then one of the designers on the team was just doodling one day and came up with this Japanese-esque sort of art style. And when we looked at it, it took our breath away. Your mythical crusade is to return color and life energy to a landscape rendered barren by the forces of evil. In Okami, you basically take control of this main character named Amaterasu, who is actually a wolf god. It's your typical battle between good and evil. There's this ancient evil that used to attack the world, and back then, Amaterasu fought against the evil and ended up sealing the evil away. Now, centuries have passed, and the evil has returned. Amaterasu comes back to help the world restore the life essence that has been drained by the revival of this evil character. The game itself is based roughly on a lot of Japanese story tales, but it's been designed so that anyone, whether they know these Japanese stories or not, is going to enjoy playing the game. The main implement of interaction is the celestial brush, a magical power that is expressed through the movements of the wolf god's tail. This game is going to have about 13 major celestial brush powers, and how you're going to do them in the game is you're going to press the R1 button and then take the brush and slide it across the screen. Now, a simple slash, a direct horizontal line, can do many things in the game. For example, you can cut trees with it. When you cut any kind of background item, you'll be able to obtain that item. Your path may be barred by certain obstacles, and you can cut them out of the way and then proceed to new areas that you couldn't before. When it comes to combat, this simple horizontal slash can be used to defeat enemies, to fight them, to hit them, etc. There's one other power of the 13 that I can describe here, and that is there's a circle-like power in which you just draw a simple symbol, a circle, on the screen, and if you draw it around a dying tree or something, it brings that tree back to life. So it breathes life into whatever creature you interact with. By doing that, it begins to defeat that enemy. You're going to have to find their weak spot and then interact with it by using the celestial brush. Mastering the celestial brush is much easier than it sounds. The design makes it intuitive and fun. The controls are so natural, anybody can pick it up and just play it. It's such a new game play concept that it's not available in other games. It's going to take a little getting used to, but if you just follow the tutorial that's in the game, and it's a very user-friendly tutorial, everybody should be able to pick it up in no time flat and be able to interact with their game surroundings as freely as their creativity allows. Along with the outlet for your artistic expressions, Okami features some incredible nature effects and sublime artwork. But don't be deceived by all this beauty. We can guarantee you that even though the art is beautiful, even though the art is unique, it still has core gameplay that makes it fun to play. And I can say that with 100% confidence. So I hope that its unique feel doesn't turn off people. I hope they're willing to pick it up and try it out because I can guarantee to anyone who does buy the game, they're not going to walk away unsatisfied with the gameplay experience that Okami has to offer.
is 15 years after the end of the reign of the noble Samanosuke. The clash between good and evil takes place on a new battlefield. The villain, Hideyoshi Toyotomi, has marshaled his Genma demons in feudal Japan. Soki and the other mystical samurai warriors must wage war, no matter what the cost. This is Onimusha, Dawn of Dreams, a different time and a different game from its predecessors, the Onimusha Trilogy. Onimusha was the first samurai game when PS2 was released. We wanted players who had never played samurai games before to understand Japanese history. We developed the series in three parts. This version, however, is different from the others in the series, and we wanted it to be new and distinct. In Onimusha 1, 2, and 3, the enemy had been Nobunaga. For this version, we concentrate on Hideyoshi's story, the lord who ascended right after Nobunaga. This helps separate this version from previous releases. To those Onimusha fans who think this game is merely a side story of the Onimusha series, I'll tell you right now, it's much more than that. I want fans to understand that this is the fourth self-contained installment. But the reason we didn't put a number on this game is we wanted to fundamentally change the contents of the game itself. Dawn of Dreams features a powerful and flexible new fighting system. It delivers lightning-fast action with five playable characters, each with their own special abilities and weapons. And best of all, you can now switch between two characters on the fly. Previous Onimusha users had been satisfied with the one versus one game, but we heard from many users, including those in the US, that they wanted to try some new things. At first, we simply increased the number of players, five players, including not only samurai, but also a priest, a gunslinger, and a street fighter. Each of these new players by himself would have had a difficult time fitting in the Onimusha universe, so we decided to pair them with traditional Japanese characters. One samurai and one of the other characters would expand Onimusha's action world. Therefore, we introduced the new pair system. So you can switch from one character to another in real time. In addition, while you play character A, for example, you're able to give commands to character B, which you aren't even playing at the moment. You can tell them to wait or whatever you want. The deeper the friendship between the two characters, the more efficiently they follow your orders. Stay over there! The new dynamic camera system allows you more freedom to move and explore throughout the feudal landscape. And when it's time for a battle, the action gets intense. Environments are constantly expanding as you learn more about each character and master each stage. Another feature of this game that the players enjoy is the stage system. In a pair of characters, each has a different gimmick. If the players can find and use those gimmicks, they will find another new stage and expand the story. And the new free camera system allows the player to view more of the stage dynamically. As you clear the map, you may want to switch from your old partner to a new partner in order to discover new items and find new story developments. Even if you're playing the same map over and over, you will find new situations. This installment of Onimusha is less linear than previously, so even if you think you've cleared the stage, the new features allow it to constantly expand and offer new discoveries. battle rages, you must use your experience and rely on your samurai friends if evil is to be vanquished in Onimusha, Dawn of Dreams. century, 
the islands of Japan have fallen into civil war. An elite band of warriors, samurai and ninja, unite against a common enemy. From the creators of the legendary Dynasty Warriors series comes Samurai Warriors, an all-new tactical action game for PlayStation 2. Samurai Warriors is a game that takes place in the warring period of Japan. This is one of the most exciting periods for the samurai, when they were in the process of trying to create their ideals. It is a very fun game that has all the exhilaration of an action game. The fact that you slash through enemies by yourself, this was the kind of excitement that was experienced by the samurais and the kind of excitement that we feel the users can experience by playing the game. The origins of samurai culture can be traced back to a divided Japan, a time when independent states and lords found regular conscript armies ineffective. Samurais lived in Japan when Japan was not unified. It was divided into different regions. Each region was headed by a lord, so each samurai was under a lord. So if the lord commanded them to go into battle, that was the samurai's most important mission. The family unit was not as important as the lord-warrior relationship. In portraying the period, Sugiyama and his team fused actual historical events with a healthy dose of fictional elements to allow the player to create brand new adventures rooted deep in Japan's past. We have purposely stayed away from being 100% accurate to history. If we did, the users would know the outcome of the game. We want this game to be a learning experience for the user as well as for us. We try to focus on the drama of history instead of being tied down by the facts. We want to emphasize what is exciting about history and put that into the games. Samurai Warriors features an active mission system, or AMS, which provides a specific mission during each battle. This gives the player hundreds of possible variations over the course of the game. We have 15 characters to choose from, plus an additional one you can create and edit on your own. Each character has their own specific missions and stages, giving the player the possibility of over 100 different missions in the game. One of the most interesting and unique modes in this game is the castle mode, or survivor mode. In this mode, you can climb up or down as the castle is spontaneously created. So if you clear one floor, you can go on to the next and basically continue for over 200 floors up or down. That's almost a game in and of itself. Samurai warriors will mix historical characters from feudal Japan with fictional ones created specifically for this endeavor. Characters will also feature unique behaviors, giving each one a distinct personality. The people in battles are based on history. The most popular characters will be Oda Obunaga and Sanada Yukimura. Besides one of the most popular ninjas in Japan, Hattori Hanzo, we also have a female ninja, Kunoichi, who is an original character for Samurai Warriors. We have characters like Goemon, a very famous robber from that period. With his very big hair, he looks really interesting. Game characters are provided with the traditional weapons of this period, including katanas, shurikens, kunai, and several other deadly implements. We have put a lot of time and effort into creating the weapons. We picked traditional Japanese weapons for this game, such as the Japanese sword and shuriken, a flying sword used in ancient Japan. There are characters who carry bombs on their backs which can be hurled. It's a little sci-fi, but the availability of these weapons adds interesting features to these games. We also use two interesting items, which are not usually considered as weapons in Japan, an umbrella and a kendama. A kendama is a traditional Japanese toy played by children that consists of throwing a ball and trying to balance it into a cup. So we've turned that into a weapon. Of all the amazing accomplishments Samurai Warriors has to offer, several features stand out in this unrivaled gaming experience. There are two achievements we are really proud of. The first is the deep perspective of the battlefields, a new feature of this game. The fact that you can see so far into the background is one thing we are very proud of. The second is the battles within the castles themselves. We have numerous traps and different devices within them that make the gameplay interesting.
With an ancient battlefield set to be reborn, Sugiyama and the team at Koei have mixed historical fact with breathtaking fantasy, bringing the player the ultimate tactical action experience in Samurai Warriors. <laughs> behind Yakuza as a game is a really authentic, uh, realistic underworld story about the Yakuza in Japan. So the game takes place in various environment, anything from the uh, back alleys of Tokyo, very dark, gritty scenery, to uh, very bright, neon light lit, as well as uh, nightclubs, bars, hostess clubs, uh, batting cages. One of the biggest unique thing about Yakuza is the story and its authenticity. The story of Yakuza, we've got a, a deep and, and involving storyline penned by an award-winning novelist in Japan, uh, Hase-san, who worked uh, very closely with uh, Nagoshi-san, the uh, director of the game, to create this, you know, very authentic uh, feeling of the, the Japanese underworld creating, uh, you know, feeling like you're part of this Yakuza experience and you're able to then interact with characters that are authentic and, and feel really unique and, uh, you know, traditionally Japanese in this uh, Yakuza world. I don't think there's any other developer in the world who can deliver this sort of authenticity of the game. So the main character of Yakuza is uh, Kazuma. He is uh, essentially he's just been released from prison. He had a 10-year sentence for uh, a crime that he did not commit, actually. And so he's getting back into the world uh, after this 10-year absence. He is this big, tough uh, Japanese guy who's very soft-spoken, yet he's one of those guys that you don't want to mess around with. <laughs> The uh, other main character in the game is his best friend, Nishiki, who uh, essentially uh, is the one who committed the crime that, for which Kazuma took the rap. And now Nishiki has taken this opportunity through 10 years to really propel himself through the ranks of the Yakuza. And now uh, their friendship is tested as they are put on either side of this uh, you know, missing $100 million. Haruka, she's a young girl who plays a real, really interesting role in a, in a story. She's, she's essentially gonna hold a key to the mystery that wraps around the story. Uh, you're gonna meet dozens of interesting characters all the way throughout Yakuza. There's uh, you know, a myriad of, of Yakuza bosses and sub-bosses and forcers. You'll run into the Chinese triad. You'll see all sorts of uh, things from you know, street punks to uh, anything you can imagine in the nightlife of Tokyo. The story is what really drives this game, and cutscenes is, is an excellent way to demonstrate how the story is portrayed in a game. It's totally Hollywood style, um, great camera work, it's very cinematic, there's uh, great editing and, and uh, great performances in here, so um, you'll see a lot of really top-notch, high-quality cutscenes to kind of pull the story, which you really involved as you get, you know, fighting your way through the, uh, the world of Yakuza. The prequel sits you back to where uh, Kazuma, Nishiki, and Yumi were still in orphanage, and how they met, and how they spent time together building their relationship, and how they uh, decided to go out to the world and enter the Yakuza world. So yeah, by watching the prequel, you can really get an understanding of who those characters are, where they're from, and their background, and how they ended up to be where they are in the beginning of the story in the game. Essentially, the, the gameplay of Yakuza stretches over uh, 13 uh, sprawling chapters of the story. And uh, as you go through there, you'll fight you know, dozens of boss battles from you know, major heads of the Yakuza to you know, their, their henchmen and enforcers. There are over, over 70 different types of uh, side missions and, and mini games you can, you can experience and play, uh, as well as uh, there are over 300 items and weapons you can collect and use in the game. You know, the hand-to-hand -hand combat is at the core of Yakuza. Uh, you know, Kazuma, when he meets a challenge, he'll answer it many times with his fist. But in addition to that, there's a variety of other gameplay elements. Um, there's a lot of, you know, character interaction. There is um, some variety of combat, including uh, there's some shooting stages. 
The fighting system is very easy to understand. It starts with a few basic moves, but then it just broadens out as you advance and slowly teaches you more and more moves. Pretty much anything you see that's kind of laying around, whether it's a lead pipe, a crate, a garbage can, you can pick that up and use it. You'll find guns. You'll actually, if people will attack you with swords, you knock them down, take the sword out of their hands. And there's a great uh, block and evade system where you can really, you know, strategize and get around all these weapon attacks. But my favorite thing really is the heat gauge and being able to unlock these new uh, powerful finishing moves as well as, uh, you know, having these customized finishing moves for each of the weapons. I think the things that are really going to make Yakuza stand out, uh, among other titles, is, is one, this authentic world of the Yakuza. It's a thing that gamers really haven't seen before, and they're going to be able to get in and live that. It's like, it's like reading a really good book. Uh, you just can't wait to turn a page or watching a really great film. You just, you just want to keep watching it to find out what happens next. This, this game and the story delivers just that. It's going to be an experience uh, unlike any other on the console.